In this video, I'm going to show you how to contour a sphere. And I've chosen to do that because spheres show up a lot in nature. Like if you look at this Paris map, we've got spheres one, two, three up here. We've got spheres here in the croissants. We've got spheres in the oranges and then also in the skull. So just knowing how to do this will help to make your projects look realistic and nice. So go ahead and you'll grab a piece of watercolor paper and then you'll get out a water, watercolor palette. I really like the Windsor and Newton Cotman because they're good beginner student grade watercolors, nice and cost effective, good range of colors, nothing looks too like neon-y. Um, and then you are going to moisten the colors that you plan on using. So I've already moistened these four blues and I've used a blunt syringe to do that. If you don't have a syringe, which a lot of people don't, um, go ahead and just use a small spoon to apply water to your watercolors or use a little spray bottle. Either way, what you're trying to do is incorporate water into these so they're easier to work with. Uh, it'll loosen up the pigment a little bit. So then just set these aside somewhere where it's handy. And today we're going to make a blue circle, which is why I have moistened my blues. So you'll get your watercolor brush wet. And just very quickly, watercolor brushes come in different sizes. So when you're at the store, you can see on the shaft of the brush what size it is. This is a size three, which is kind of a medium size. And you'll get your brush nice and moist with, uh, with your art water here. And then you'll pick out a tone for your base layer. So I think what I'm going to do is pick out my lightest blue tone. And then you're going to make a circle. And go ahead and make that full circle. Just do the best you can to make it perfect. It's just not going to be. And then you'll moisten your brush and paint on that circle with just water on your paintbrush. And that's going to draw some of that blue out and spread it out. And I want to point out that as I'm painting here, I'm not going up and down or side to side. I am following the contours of my circle. So I'm working in a circular motion, which is really important. And I've just added more pigment to my brush because I was running out of pigment from the outside of the circle. So this is our base layer. And at this point you need to decide which side your light is coming from. So what side are you going to have that shadow on? I would like for my shadow to be over here on the right side. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and moisten my brush again and then use the same value of blue to just add some color there. This is a wet on wet technique. So what that means is my circle is still wet and my paint on my brush obviously is wet. And then that paint just blends right in. And again, I'm using my brush in sort of a circular motion, no up and down or side to side here because we want to follow the contours of this sphere. And then we'll apply some more paint because I'm just trying to make this shadow pretty obvious and realistic. And we'll work all the way up to a little spot up here. Okay. Now you can continue to use the same blue if you want, but I want to give my sphere a blue boost. So I'm going to go ahead and use an intense blue color. And again, using a wet on wet technique. Later we'll use a wet on dry technique. I'm just blending that out and then getting my brush wet with just water and drawing this intense blue up into the rest of the circle to incorporate it and help to make the circle into a sphere. I'm 
And we'll draw that up a little bit more, a little bit higher. I'm going to add a little more pigment to my brush and draw it up even more. So the whole goal here is we're saying, we're trying to communicate that the light is really hitting this sphere right here. And then this is the part of the sphere that has quite a bit of shadow. So let's add even more shadow. I've applied more pigment to my brush. And then we'll draw that out with a brush that's just been moistened with water. All right, so let's let that dry a bit and see if we want to do any wet on dry. And while we wait, let's work on the shadow under the sphere. So what I would do is use this Payne's Gray if you're using this watercolor palette. Um, it does have a black value, but I like to use grays if possible because you don't see a whole bunch of black in nature, like pure black. And what you're going to do is just follow the contours of the sphere down here. Make sure you don't actually touch your brush to the sphere because the sphere is still wet. So you'll get some uh, gray blooming out there. And then what you're going to do is kind of make a half moon shape. Okay, and I think we can get a little bit closer to the sphere. We just want a tiny sliver of white there, which we will eventually fill in. There we go. And maybe we'll make this a little bit longer. Very good. Okay, now, you wash off your brush here and have only water on it and then just use your brush to draw out this value. And I need more water on here because I do want this shadow to be lighter than what it's shaping up to be. And eventually we just want it to fade into the paper here. Okay, let's get that to blend just a little bit more. You can see that I use this brush with just water a lot. So painting with watercolors does entail using the pigment, but it also entails um, using, using your water in a smart way to draw out pigment and also to temper the pigment. Okay. So one of the things that my art teacher taught me in elementary school that I've carried forward to this day is to look at something from far away. So I am going to just lean back here and I'm looking at the sphere and what I don't like about this sphere is I've got very specific levels of color and I don't want that. I want the sphere to blend better. So specifically, this is a problem area and then also this. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more of that light blue, 
just get that up there in the sphere. A little bit more of that darker blue I was using. It's just all about building on. And you'll notice I'm kind of um, dabbing my brush at this point because if I'm brushing over, then the color tends to follow my brush and I want it to stay. And then I'll go ahead and blend this up here. And then we've got this problem area here, so we'll just address that. And blend this just a little bit better and then we'll be done. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I can see that the rim of my sphere has dried, so I can pretty safely apply my wet brush to this shadow and just sort of draw it up a little bit without worrying about the shadow um, getting onto that sphere. Which just makes the shadow look a little more natural. And yeah, there I am mostly done, except I do want to add a little more blue to there. It's the thing with art, right? You can always add more, do more. Okay. Okay, now let's layer just a little bit more on there. So this area stands out as white. And again, I'm using that dabbing technique. And I could just continue forever contouring this, but you can tell at this point that it's a sphere. Uh, it looks pretty good, so I'm going to call that done. And yeah, that is how you contour a sphere. To apply what you learned in this video, I highly recommend filling out the watercolor basics worksheet. And if you want to take it to the next level and you really like this Paris map, you can take the watercolor maps 101 e-course, which teaches you a lot of blending techniques and also how to deal with shapes like rectangles and squares. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something. Thank you very much for watching.